My name is Carolina. I work as a project manager for Öresund Smart City Hub. We're a collaborating project in the Öresund region, which is the south of Sweden and the easternmost island of Denmark. We've hacked ourselves into this event because, of course, the buses, the trains have computers. There is a lot of data being collected as we speak here today. And then we have the anarchists of the city, the, the bikers without computer, or they have something on them, the mobile phones that we might want to dive into, or we put Google glasses on them, or we use other devices. So we suggest let's get jamming on bikes. And I just want to say shortly what Arsun Smart City Hub does. I work for a political platform between Sweden and Denmark called the Öresund Committee. Then we have three municipalities, which are the main uh, challenge uh, people here today. And they will give you a short challenge as well. So you don't only have to listen to me. We have the clean tech clusters with us because this is development that we are doing. And we have universities and we got money from the regions. We also have money from the European Union, I should say, cross-border funding. So, Arasun Smart City Hub sees a gap. The municipalities have a lot of challenges. There is a lot of technologies out there, and it needs to be implemented somehow in a good strategic way, not just like apps here and there creating an app graveyard, which is one of the words that we've actually been working on in the project. So we want to increase the knowledge and the opportunities of using ICT. And that's why we hacked ourselves into this event, because we are not the hackers. This is the train that I arrived with this morning. It says express, but it's all rusty and old. And it took a whole night to go from Stockholm. And it made me think about the thing now when we are conceptualizing mobility future. It's like human develop faster than infrastructure. So what's happening now is that we start biking. We really have started biking. I don't know if you realize, but Arki that just arrived from Estonia, and I was like, how's your first five minutes of Malmö? He says, there are so many bikes. And there are really so many bikes. 30-40% of people are biking in our region, and we don't know much about them. We need the tools, so we need you in this room. But there are some strategic in, uh, biking infrastructure coming up, like how many of you in here have seen the underground bike parking in Malmö? Some? Some are not? What about the traffic planner in Lund? You haven't been there. <laughs> we need to go on a study tour. So I want to speak about big data bike. What is that? Who is that? And why do we do it? Something about who is doing it. Big is something with open, right? We need to collaborate. We need policymakers to make laws. We need some, all of those policy influencers all those who work for IBM and Oracle and speak to the policymakers of you should do this big data of everything that you own. It's also about a lot of data holders that can make it big. So who can make data? I think a lot of you know most about this here. We have all these professional bike apps, Strava, Endomundo. We have a lot of researchers that have their collected data on biking. Uh, we have bike rental systems that know how the bikes have moved, uh, national bike federations and so forth. And who are the bikists? That's everyone that bikes. So what is it, big data bike? As I said, and as most of you know in this room, there is some policies needed. It needs to be collected, combined, and collaborated. There is some strategic decisions that needs to be taken, and that's why it's so nice to hear Christian speaking before and Skåne Trafiken speaking here today, because I think we have a common interest 
of raising awareness and make it trickle down into our organization what it means to make data big. And data on bikes can be so many things. It can be patterns of movement, route choices of the bikes, transport needs, speed amount, frequency, bike pass, so forth. And what is a bike? Maybe I should have started with that. But it can be an electrical bike as well. We've used the definitions, a vehicle with no or little engine, whatever little engine is. So, there's also, when we look at the city, and I say that the bikes are anarchists, they just go around there, 30-40%, we don't know who they are, why they do it. So, when we have had these discussions with the municipalities, we've sort of hmm, gathered this into different pillars, you can say. What kind of data are you in need of? And one thing that's come up originally is like, we don't just n want to know where they move, we want to know who they are and why they did the choices that they did. Otherwise, we cannot develop the city into being a strategic bike city, where the bike is first. So, we have the where data, which is, of course, different trackers, our mobiles, GPSs, Google Glasses, minimum viable device. And we could combine that with asking people simple questions of name and age, that we say biodata, sort of. And then comes the more tricky part. Why did they do the choices? And how do we combine this qualitative data with the more quantitative wear data? This is reasons choosing for certain routes, bike safety, how they feel about safety and so forth. And then we have external bike data, pollu pollution, road works, how did that affect the biking experience, the weather? The weather, who's speaking about the weather? But it does affect, right? So, why do we do bike data? We're a little bit, maybe, how to say, controversial here, but we say, or I say, we are 100 years behind because the car has been measured, the car had been thought about, the suburbs have been developed, the shopping centers, the algorithms, the, f the researchers, the car industry. We have this uh, pattern of the city. And today, people are moving around in a total different direction. So if we want to do the next step, we need to look at another kind of turns and circles. And this is what we want you to help us with. Because we have a hundred questions, at least. But we will define it a little bit better. But this is just like the big list of the short list that you will be presented with in a little while. You can look at it later, I guess, the presentations will be. I just want to give you an example of combinations of bike data. I was just in a quite big clean tech event last week and some bike people have really been invited to stand on the stage. Bike is popular, bike is cool, it's Copenhagen. And one of the things that came up was that a city in uh, the Netherlands, Rotterdam, is right now putting sensors in the traffic lights, which will, if it rains, so it's weather sensors, and if it rains, it will speak to the traffic lights and make the bikists go through first. So a green way for bikists if it rains. This is a combination of data because of course you need that weather sensor, which is a kind of external from the actual bike. And you need um, the attitude of the bike bikists. Did it work? So we put all these sensors, we do all this work for you in the city, but does it uh, change your attitude? We need some kind of qualitative questions. And then we need to see if the bike is actually where there. So we need kind of flow data. Where? Where, why, and external data. 
So, this is all the big picture, and now we're gonna cut it down to the bones because we've dug up some data for you from the municipalities. It might not be that big, it might not be the hottest data around yet, but I promise you in five years, there'll be a totally different picture of the needs of products based on the knowledge, understanding of where the municipalities are now, because they're going somewhere with the data. So, let's start on home ground. Where do we have Johan? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello, my... Is it on? Yes. Hello, my name is Johan Irveno and I work for Malmö Municipality. And I'm a transport analyst. I work with forecasting and capacity studies. And uh, yeah, we work with a traditional four-step model. And it's quite straightforward for the car traffic, but for the bikes, it's the last step in it. It's quite hard. And it's the road assignment. Because we don't know what preferences the bikes bikers have in Malmö. But the cars, they are they are following the time. They go where it's fastest. But the uh, bikers, they yeah, they they like the environment. They like the yeah, and not be separate. They want to be separated from car traffic, etc. So our biggest problem is to get the data, and we have a survey out at this moment that will get us some data. But unfortunately, this time we don't do it connected with time, but we get the different ways they wrote around in the city to make an analysis of how, which roads they prefer. So our biggest interest is to how to collect data and what we can do with it. And also we have uh, delivered some data, but we want to know if we collect this data, what can we do then, etc. Yes. It's at the www punkt m a l m o dot s e slash c y k e l okay Sicker. we'll do that <laughs> we're all gonna be on very colorful uh, traffic wests and we're gonna be around uh, to further inspire you and show you everything that we're talking about now let's get the next cool Municipality. Is it on? Hello. Yes. Okay. He hello, everybody. My name is Emil Tin, and I'm from the city of Copenhagen. I work at our ITS program, um, and I've also been a project manager for our iPike CPH uh, navigation tool that we created. It's a website and an app for iPhone, Android that helps people or cyclists to navigate in the city. And uh, it's 100% open source, so I brought everything today. We have an open AP API you can use for querying bike routes and so on. So the challenge is, this is really um, one of the few things that we did related to bikes and, and, and data and so on. So the challenge is, how can we improve it uh, when we ask people in Copenhagen why they bike, is the number one thing they say is that it's, it's faster. Number two is it's more convenient, then it's healthier, and it's cheaper. So the question is, a service like this, how can we add new features, how can we integrate with all other data sources and so on to, to support these things, these qualities, you know? How can a service like this, an app like this, make it even, even faster to go by bike, uh, you know? make people understand how healthy he is, and so on. And there will yeah. be a lot of time to yes. dig into this, because you're going to have a demo. That's right. I'll do a demo later, so where you can see a lot more. I will show how to use the API, I'll show how to use our map design, map tiles, and so on, and where to find the code. Yeah, so drop by. All right. The last municipality that we have dug some data up for you today is Lund. And uh, Hendrik will speak about the new developments connected to the hackathon. Hello, everybody. My name is Hendrik. I come from Lund. And we got pretty much the same needs that, that Malmö has. We want to know where and why the bicycle is taking 
the path through the city. And uh, partly we will solve that needs by having some sensors maybe to collect Bluetooth signals and Wi-Fi signals from uh, mobile phones and iPads and so on. Um, but those units are pretty expensive, so we need to know if there are some other uses we can, uh, other um, areas we can use these uh, techniques for. Um, that we call the blip track, for instance. It's a Danish company. That's one of the technologies that you're looking at. So yeah. it's up for grabs, guys. Uh, Lund wants to put something smart up to see uh, preference, route, preference routes. So it's still up for grabs, yep. you can say. Thanks. So if you have questions, we will try to be around all day. We'll have very colorful Wests, and we really want to discuss this further with you. I just want to say something about um, there is this Michael Colville that was very interested in coming today. He is the bi big bike guru of Copenhagen. He's in uh, Australia right now, so he couldn't make it. But he's sort of peppered me with this. Carolina, if you want to talk about data, it's not the future. The future is who is the person. We need to look at very simple strategies to develop the city. It's all about bike friendliness close to the human being. And that's true. So the code to unlock the future of the bike is not the data. It's just a tool. We need to look at the persons. I just want to wrap up and say we know that there is no big bike data or big data bike yet. But it will come because all those of you out there that knows a little room with a lot of data on bikes, it will open up and co be collected and collaborated in the future. We will definitely try to work on that, which means we'll get a much more uh, centralized picture. How did those Dutch people act when it started raining? Mama will want to know that when they develop their biking city. So it's not big yet. There's not many open IPIs and so forth, at least not from the municipality's perspective, but it will be. Um, as I said, people are hotter than data, which also goes for this event. So go up and speak to the people and not just look at the data that we have provided. We want to expand, link, and visualize the data. That's what we try to speak about today, so help us with that. And also, tell us what data we don't have. Tell us what we can do with the data that we don't have. If you think that this is sort of, th there's something we totally missed, if that's your opinion when you listen to this, please. Um, we are up for grabs and we want to be challenged. <laughs>